on these three lines here, what I want you to do is I want you to select three vertical lines. Okay? On the first one here, I want you to put it below the line, down like this. On the second one, I want you to put it in the middle of the page and in the middle of the horizon line. And on the final one over here, I want you to place it way over on this edge over here and I want you to crisscross the line, but put it low on the line, the vertical line. So we're going to have three lines that are going diagonally across your page here, basically. And these three lines are representing the corner of a room, one single corner of a room. So we have to decide where's the top of the room, where's the bottom. Top and the bottom, top and bottom. So just define that with just a, a simple little line that says that's where it is. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select some vanishing points. And our vanishing points are going to determine what the angle is of the viewer to the corner of the room. So in each and every one of these drawings, we're going to select a vanishing point that's directly over top of each other. One right here, one right here, and one right here. And then we're going to do the same thing on this far side over here. We're going to place a vanishing point that's here, directly below it here, and directly below it there. So that this strip up here there's the vanishing point, and there's the other vanishing point over there, and here's the corner of the room that we're looking at. For this one here, there's our two vanishing points for it, and for this corner over here, there's our two vanishing points for it. So once again, once we've gotten to this point, it's a game of connect the dots. With three point per, or two point perspective, you only have three choices. You go straight up and down, or you go to this vanishing point, or you go to this vanishing point. So when you draw your line, your vertical line that represents the corner of the room, you've assigned an end point to it. So there's a dot, and there's a dot. There's a dot, there's a dot. Connect your dots. And you can go from the bottom to the vanishing point, from the top to the vanishing point on the left, I've now concluded my first two choices. My first choice was straight up and down. My second choice is to the vanishing point on the left-hand side. And now my final choice is to the vanishing point right there. Not over here. 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 I've selected this point. It's there for a reason. I chose it. So my only other choice now is to take those lines to that vanishing point. second here and let's think about our navels for a few minutes. Now we're not going to think about our navels because thinking about our navel is pointless. We have to think about what we're drawing. Think when you draw but don't think about things that do not relate to your drawing. Don't think about the pound of butter that you got to buy or the quarter milk or the loaf of bread or your navel hair or whatever. Right? You're thinking about your drawing. So I'm assuming, once again, that you guys did exactly what I did, right? What do those four lines, five lines, actually represent? The box. The box? Did I say we were drawing a box? What did I say we were drawing? A room. A room. We're drawing a room. So what do those four lines plus the corner represent? If that's the corner. What's happening here? The walls are going away from us. Are we inside a room? Nope. No, we're actually outside of a room. 
So what do we have to do to put ourselves inside the room? Our field division has to be below the ceiling? No. No, we can still be outside like this, but I mean, what I mean is inside the room, but above it in this instance. What do we have to do to get them inside the room? You have to go to the middle vanishing point. Uh, make it above here. Right? No. We have to move our vanishing point. No. no. I like my vanishing points where they are. Well, where the horizon line? No, I like where my horizon line is. I like where my corner is. What? Harder? Taller. Taller, no. I like the height of my room. I like the height of my walls. I like everything that I've drawn so far. What's the problem? Uh, it's not rude. You have to bring the lines out. You gotta bring the lines out? I have to extend my lines. My lines have to extend beyond, okay? I don't need this part of the line here. I don't need this part of the line here. Or this part of the line up here. Or this part of the line up here, okay? This is the defining line for the corner of the inside of the room. I need my walls to extend towards me, not away from me. They have to come towards me. So I just extend the lines beyond that corner. Okay. The visual perception then is that now we are in a room, not outside the room. So now in order to complete this, we could, if we wanted to, define the other corner of this room, but the other corner has to be where? Just slightly outside the edge of that vanishing point there in order for us to remain inside the room. So then if we extend from this point through this corner here, that line's gonna go down like this, and this line over here is gonna go down like this. So now we've got a surface of a floor here that we can see, let's say this is the other corner right here. We can then create a floor line from the vanishing point through this corner point here, extending down like that. And this line extends down here. Okay. And then choosing our field of vision, we could select our field of vision so that we're actually there. Right. There's a cutoff over here. So we don't see this line here, nor do we see this corner. We don't see this corner, we don't see the top. What we see are these three lines right here that represents the wall, the wall, the floor. So we're looking down in the corner. Okay. Now we could have kept those lines going back off into the distance. Okay, try doing this. Put another line that's right here on this wall. And extending this line here back to the vanishing point and erasing this line right here. We basically created a hallway. There's a hall that goes back here. This wall continues back in this direction here. There's the corner. You go around there and in behind that. Okay. Or we can do the same thing over here. You put another line over here and say that this is the wall that's a solid wall there, and that this line continues through here. Oops. Erase that line there. And this is floor in here. This is the floor, this is a new wall here that goes into a hallway that goes down there. And this is a solid wall over here. Okay? So you can interconnect boxes to each other in order to create different angles or different parts of boxes. We're just putting boxes together. Now we're not going to do this center one here because we've covered that over. We'll come back to that in a second. But now let's go down to this one over here. Let's do the same thing that we just did, but let's do it properly this time. Let's put ourselves inside the room. So from the vanishing point, we're going to extend the line out 
towards us this way. And same thing with this one here. Looks out towards us this way. And then this one goes up here. And this one goes over here. So now we have a wall that's coming towards us like this. And we've got a wall that's going away from us there. There's our ceiling up here. And here's our floor down here. So it's your visual perception when you, when you look at these simple lines, like for this area that's down here, if we eliminate the horizon line and the vanishing point, we've got one, two, three, four, five lines. And within a field of vision, a specific field of vision like this, we can say, that's a wall, that's a ceiling, there's another wall, there's the floor. And it gives us our point of view. A 10-foot ceiling here would position us, there's five feet, roughly at about two feet off the ground. Maybe we're a dog in the room looking at the corner, trying to find a place to pee or something like that. But our horizon line is very low, and we're looking towards the corner. Now, the thing with this one here is that if we select this type of a field of vision here, that brings our vanishing point inside our field of vision, which means that these lines here really should be parallel to each other. And so it turns into a one-point perspective. So therefore, this is correct, but not quite correct. Okay. This one over here, if we look back to this room here, what's the problem with this? See those two lines that are there? This is the line of the wall that's on this side over here. This is the floor. This surface here is the floor. And there's the line along the other floor line there, so there's a wall there. What's wrong with those two lines? Anybody know? Like regular. What do you mean irregular? I don't know, it just doesn't seem like the wall fit there. And where you're Be specific. Be very specific about what it is. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Nope, you're not. Okay. When when things are built, anything that is manufactured, so here's my computer here. What kind of an angle is this? 90 degrees. Okay? It's a 90 degree angle. Um, what else have I got here? What kind of an angle is that? 90 degrees. What kind of an angle is that? 90 degrees. Okay. Pretty much everything is built on the basis of being 90 degrees, rooms included. Is that 90 degrees? No, it's a sharper angle. It's less than 90 degrees. That can't be. It's impossible for that to happen. Okay. This can happen because it's greater than 90 degrees. This can happen, it's greater than 90 degrees. This can happen, it's greater than 90 degrees. This can happen, it's greater than 90 degrees. But this can't happen, because it's smaller than 90 degrees. So if you were to look at any corner of anything, anywhere, no matter what angle you look at it from, it will never be less than 90 degrees, ever. So if I turn the camera here, let me just turn Take it off the tripod here. Now let me just point it at the corner over here. Oops. Okay, see the corner of the room there? Okay. It's greater than 90 degrees. As I move the camera down, lower the horizon line, see how that angle opens up? The black strip that's on the floor there? It's opening up to a wider angle. As I move above it, I gotta unplug the camera here just a second. Take off the power source here. But as I move the camera over here, 
So I'm looking at it from a straight down point of view. That's a 90 degree angle right there. It will never go less than 90 degrees, ever. It can't. Visually, it's impossible for it to do. All right. So any angle that you're ever going to draw on anything, and I'm looking down there, it's pretty close to 90 degrees as I move down like this, it begins to open out wider and wider and wider. See how the angle is opening out? The same thing goes for the ceiling up here. If I look at that angle there, as I move further and further away from it, the angle opens out. But as I move closer to it like this, it turns into a pure 90 degree angle. But it will never go less than 90 degrees, ever. Nothing will. Okay? The corner of the desk here. No matter what angle I look at it on here, it will never go to less than 90 degrees. That's an absolute rule. So when your drawing does go to something like that, it's wrong. You can't show that on screen. Okay? That has to be outside of your field of vision because it's impossible to represent that. Right? So you can draw it, like that perspective in that drawing is correct, it's just that I can't open the field of vision that wide and show something like that. I have to crop my field of vision so it's more like this. Okay? That can never happen. Right? So if at some point in time you're drawing an, an object of some sort and the angle gets less than 90 degrees, you know you've done something wrong. And you have to correct it. Okay? How would you correct it? Actually, a quick question. Yep. Hey, what if it was like a glass room and you're standing outside of it? Yep. Would you still show it that way? You can't do that. It's an absolute rule. You can't do that. Now, if I'm outside the room, which I was just about to say, what can you do to correct this drawing? Put it outside the field of vision. What? Put what outside the field of vision? Well, let's say this is my field of vision right here. Put the wall, the corner of the wall outside. Which corner? No, I want, I want all four corners to be inside my field of vision. It becomes a box. Yeah, it becomes a box, so what do I have to move in order to make it correct? Draw it as if you would a box, so it would have No, what do I have to move? What, what on here are things that I can move? I can move lines. I can move points. Vanishing point. Vanishing point. What do I have to move the vanishing point to? I should move it over here. But if I do that, if I move my vanishing point to here, what happened? It got sharper. So what's my other option? Pardon me? Move it further out. I have to move it out this way. Okay? If I move it out like this, to where this now becomes a 90 degree angle, that means that I'm standing directly above this corner here and it now becomes correct. Okay? So all you have to do is just slide your vanishing point out further to open it up. If you ever find that your angle is too sharp down here and you want this to fall within your field of vision, push this vanishing point further out to the side and it will automatically correct the issue. So let's do that. Let's just take a blank sheet of paper here and then just slide this whole thing over.